So I'm gonna waste no more time and do something about this car. WD-40 makes removing exhaust mounts easy as I'm starting to remove the exhaust to give me more room to access the diff. This cross member is in the way, so out with that too. <coughs> Although a hoist is not required to remove an exhaust, it definitely made this job easier and less claustrophobic. Now with the exhaust out, it gives me much better indication of what's really going on underneath the car. Originally I thought I have a pretty significant gearbox leak on my hands, but it doesn't really seem too much of an issue, except access is quite shit. So I guess it was never going to be easy to begin with considering the nature of the car. There's gonna be access issues and probably when they built the car, they didn't really think about anyone swapping anything later down the track, who knows? We shall see. So this thing is very tight and I can't seem to get it off with normal tools. I've gone out and purchased a extended ring spanner and I'm going to use a blowtorch to, you know, heat up the nut and get it going. But because I used WD-40 and it didn't work, I have to get all the WD-40 off before I give this thing a hit with the blowtorch. And hopefully it should come off. There's one bolt, three more to go. And it's very interesting to see that just a lot of things on this car just don't fit as in these bolts don't seem to have enough space to really even get a spanner in there most of my spanners or ring spanners don't even fit in there unless they're really skinny um yeah i would say that the car was probably not built to be pulled apart 25 years later there you go Unbolt the axles whilst the car is suspended requires some not so critical thinking. From what I understand, there's a bracket here, which is supposed to replicate what the actual Mazda NA diff is, because it's got this sort of T thing on the top of the diff where this Holden diff does not. And these would be, those bolts there are going to be some NA Mazda top mounts. That is the middle mount. I think there's another mount over here. If I unbolt that, there should be a thread that's sort of stuck into the car, so it's not gonna spin. And then I should be able to lower the diff enough to either get the whole thing out or just to unbolt the top bit that I can't reach. Hence why I've lowered the car to this point. So I'll get a jack underneath it and give it a crack. At this point, I had the diff hanging, ready to go, and I initially thought that it's much easier to try and maneuver it out, but in reality, I think at this point, access to the bolts was the best option, but you'll soon see that I give it a try anyway. Okay, looks like unbolting is the way to go. There were way more steps than what I thought, but at least now I know how to take it out and put it back in. Putting the other diff back in won't be too much of a problem. 
There's a lot of mounts, more than what I thought. It looks like a lot of it is to replicate what the what was on the NA Miata and obviously a little, little bit of the uh, Holden stuff as well. There's not a lot of space to really work. Now, interesting enough, the, um, the diff that I just pulled out has a texture mark saying no oil. It looks like a junkyard diff and that could be causing majority of my problems considering it's in a really poor condition and obviously the wrong ratios. In real time, I'm gonna end it for the day and reflect, but this video will continue on to the next time when I start doing some more things. So I'll definitely see you there. So it's the next day and I've done some long, hard reflection and research. In terms of the diff, things are going to be slightly different than what I anticipated. From what it looks like, the diff that's out of the car already, or the other diff that came with the car, I think that's the original diff. However, the things that the axles bolt onto, they transferred that to the junkyard diff, and also the, the thing that the tail shaft bolts onto, I think it's called the mini spool or something, they've transferred that also to the junkyard diff, and then they've transferred all the junkyard diff parts onto the original diff. Pretty much, I'm just gonna transfer from one diff to the other, and then the junkyard diff is going to be the one that I hold onto or get rid of, and it's gonna have all the old Holden parts. Um, I've looked online as much as I possibly can to see whether the um, whether the diff, the junkyard diff, uh, can be sold as is, as in does one exist as is, and it doesn't. So it means that it's custom, from what I understand. Whereas the diff that I'm trying to put in seems to be more Holden components. Um, I'm hoping that that's the case. I can't really find out how, what ratios are in each diff to really work it out unless I pull it apart, take it to someone, pay money and, and figure it out, which I might need to do. I'm still thinking whether I do that, just finally find out whether the ratios are different or not. But the previous owner said that the diff was changed because of the ratios. So I'm really going off that and trying to figure it all out, considering how long it took to take the diff out. It's not the best way to go about things, but things could change. I'm gonna end the video here, so I, I hope you enjoyed watching this series so far. And the next video, I'm gonna get started on this diff. I think it might take me some time because I've never done it before. So I'm gonna dedicate an entire video to that. But thank you for watching. Leave a comment below. If I've done anything incorrect that you think I could do better, or if there's any suggestions that you have, I'd greatly appreciate it because I'm learning and I have no clue what to do with this car. I'm just taking it as is. And some mechanical advice would be much appreciated if you have any. Otherwise, just hit the like button and subscribe because that also helps. Anyway, take care. And make sure you follow my channel so you can keep up to date with all my new videos. Thanks.